loss of control in flight. Finding a way to effectively address this problem has been a topic of discussion in our industry for decades, largely because it remains stubbornly entrenched in numerous aircraft accidents. Air France, 447 out of Rio. Colgan, 3407 over Buffalo. The list goes on. So when it came time to determine how the industry would set up its training modules, the FAA invited multiple aviation stakeholders to contribute their expertise, and it seemed only natural that the world's largest non-governmental aviation safety organization be invited to participate. So in 2009, January and February, we had four accidents uh, in the U.S. Uh, the fourth one, it was in January and February, the fourth one was the Colgan accident uh, outside Buffalo that everybody is familiar with. All of them were coupled up on the ILS with four to 5,000 feet, and it was still ended up in a stall uh, event and a crash, and the question was why. Uh, January 1st of 2009 uh, was the Air France accident. So in 2010, uh, the FAA put together an FAA industry stall stick pusher working group. We're here to uh, demonstrate and collaborate with industry leaders and that those who made the programs to really get the most and make sure we understand exactly what it is they want us to train in our simulators and our training programs back in our companies. And this is a special meeting that we're holding in Oklahoma City here at CAMI uh, because of the simulators that we have available to dedicate this session to our upset prevention and recovery training uh, that we've been developing with the FAA and some of the training organizations over the last uh, five to six years. See how to enact uh, the training that's required uh, by the FAA uh, and Congress uh, that, to be implemented in 2019. It's a collaboration really between uh, people who work in the industry, pilots, opera representatives, we're busy on the committees that help form uh, the legislation, and uh, we've got one of the FAA scientists who, who's head of simulation explaining to us aerodynamics. Reducing angle of attack is the most important uh, action that they need to take whenever they get into a stall. The one thing that we could all agree on is that the, the aerodynamically a stall is a stall and the, once you get it, the wing has stopped flying, and the first way to get the wing flying again is to reduce the angle of attack, which is to push the nose forward, or whichever way to reduce it. It was uh, pretty intense. It was a pretty intense session. Yeah. I would say it exceeded my expectations. Uh, lots of practices and things that I've never done or that I knew that the airplane could do. One big thing was the emphasis on pitch, um, to get the airplane flying again before you try to put any inputs um, laterally into the aircraft. And then we also discovered that we really weren't teaching pilots how to prevent. So that's why we now call it upset prevention and recovery training. I was expecting to see, uh, you know, the simulator give us some sort of a, of a feel of exactly what it's like to get into a full stall of a, of a large aircraft, uh, which I've never done. I've never done that live in the aircraft. And this gives us the, uh, the, the feel and gives us the look and the, the sensory and the audible sounds and a little bit of the feeling, not as much as a real aircraft, but it gives us as close as we can in the safety of the training environment. It was fantastic. It was a great experience. I've heard um, a lot of the industry groups talk about the training and increasing the simulator envelope and everything, and today was a hands-on experience where I got to experience um, a simulator who had had the advanced model inserted and gotten, gotten to a full stall, um, in, enjoyed seeing the ailerons having very little effectiveness in the, the full stall and then breaking the stall and flying the airplane. It was a great experience. If you've ever been so paralyzed by a sudden noise or change to your surroundings that you've literally frozen in place, then you've experienced the startle response. In humans, it's largely an unconscious, defensive response to a sudden or threatening stimuli. Most often, the onset of a startle response is a reaction which serves as nature's attempt to protect us we freeze. But a problem occurs when this sudden emotional state leads to a surprise response. Research has shown that the onset of a sudden upset to our airplanes can lead us to a startle response and quickly become a serious threat to safety of flight. Yeah, the startle response is basically a, a reflex or a physiological reaction. The, the classic startle response is like a, a bird hitting your windshield and all of a sudden you, 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 you jumping uh, in response to that. That startle response can lead to a surprise response um, where you start 
thinking about um, what's happening when your expectations are different from reality. And that can lead to pilot control actions that are different from what they're trained in the simulator. And so that's why it's important to try to uh, invoke those responses as best we can in simulation. Uh, the startle response is uh, when you uh, something happens that startles you, that it actually makes you freeze for a moment. It's also, also almost instinctive that you can't really we can't train against startle, but it's going to happen. So the question is, how do we recover once it does happen? We did a, a wake uh, turbulence demonstration, at which point the airplane handled uh, well outside the normal operating envelope that we normally fly the airplane, and it definitely caught me by surprise, caught me off guard, and um, it's good to see something like that can happen in the airplane. So just. Thinking about the startle, the startle response, which you guys I know learned about yesterday a little bit. What was your initial reaction to that? Was it? Can you describe that? It was kind of like whoa. It was literally a, a startle um, reaction, and it took a while to kind of get my bearings back and then focus on what is the airplane doing and how do I need to get it to uh, back to an attitude that I was prior to the event. So is that something you see going forward in training that we're really going to have to address? Very beneficial, I think. Um, being caught off guard, not knowing what to expect, and then recovering from that attitude or whatever position the airplane is, is I think is a very useful tool. Uh, the training's been great. The focus has been on upset prevention and recovery training. The training's given us confidence that what we did before and what we're currently doing now has set us up really well for complying with the public law and upcoming uh, requirements to train to it. Next step is I'm going to be going to the training department um, and indicate how important um, stall training is and unusual attitude is um, as a module in itself as opposed to just part of the normal uh, training that we do in recurrence and um, initial type training. It's it's great training. Uh, it definitely opened up my eyes to what the aircraft will really do in a upset situation or a stall situation. Finally, your impressions. What did you learn today and yesterday that you would uh, most like to pass on to uh, the average line pilot who's out there flying the line right now? Um, that it can happen to you and this is a, a very important skill set um, that every pilot should have in their back pocket to know how the airplane handles and reacts uh, when the airplane has been disturbed. And we'll have a chance to experience that skill set by March of 2019 when all of our company's simulators must be updated and loss of control in-flight training modules are due for implementation. I'm Mark Harrison. Thanks for watching.